Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. What's up, Flash family? Welcome back to the Flashpoint Podcast, the Southgate Media Group Podcast, dedicated to the hit CW show, The Flash, starring Grant Gustin and Jesse Martin, and guest starring Mark Hamill reprising his role as the trickster. Really excited about this episode, Kelly. I'm in a good mood, Kelly! (laughs) You and me both, sister! (laughs) So, yeah, if you know anything about Kelly and I, you will know that this past summer, we spent it live tweeting the original 1990s Flash in preparation, basically, for this moment. We knew it was going to happen eventually. We didn't expect it so soon, but here we are. They tricked us. (laughs) It was a good (laughs) trick. It was. <laughs> yes, you look good in red, Kelly. <laughs> well, I think. <laughs> yes, we're just going to be quoting this episode all, all during this podcast episode, so just don't mind us. We're just kind of giddy with me. I'm in love with the Flash again. It feels really good. Yes. Yes, the yes, twist? yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll get there, but, like, just, I'm just thrilled. Yes. <laughs> of course, we're talking about episode 117, Tricksters. Uh, I sent you the synopsis, so would you hear? Absolutely. A copycat hill- killer who goes by the name of the Trickster starts setting off bombs in the Central City. In order to stop the villain, Barry and Joe meet with the original Trickster, a criminal mastermind known as James Jesse, who has been imprisoned for 20 years. Things quickly go from bad to worse when the Tricksters unite and take Henry Allen prisoner. Meanwhile... Iris asks Eddie for help with the case, and flashbacks show how Harrison Wells came up with the idea for the particle accelerator. Yeah. Leaving out a few things there, but... <laughs> it's a synopsis. It's to wet the appetite. Believe me, we're going to break all of this down. <laughs> so, we had Matt uh, Lecture as Ebor Thong, the real Ebor Thong, finally stood <laughs> up. And we had uh, another guest that was also in the 1990 series, Vito D'Ambrosio, who played and de- played here, Anthony Bellows. He was a cop in the original 1990 show. He was the man yep. in this one. We had the fabulous Devon Gray as Axel Walker, a.k.a. Trickster 2.0. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was. He blew me away, by the way. I was. He was fantastic. Um, we had the lovely Michelle Harrison reprising her role as Nora Allen. A wild Patrick Sabonye also appeared, a.k.a. Captain C. And, of course, Papa Allen himself, John Wesley Shipp. So, yeah, this was, this was, this was gonna be a good episode no matter what. Nothing was gonna be exactly. down from this episode. Like, I'm just gonna be no. with y'all. <laughs> this, this was destined to be a fangirl episode, so don't even, don't even look at me. Yeah, when, when Lilith sends me a message says, you have to watch The Flash before you go to bed tonight. <laughs> and I put it on the spot too. I tweeted it. I didn't just send it on a private Facebook message. I was like, nah. <laughs> no, no. And, and, and I knew because I knew what it was. There was no way I was going to bed without watching this. <laughs> just a reminder. I know you work and you're busy, but you had, I didn't care if you had to drink eight cups of Wonder Woman coffee. Okay. <laughs> you were standing up to watch this. <laughs> so. Oh man. I watched it twice that night, by the way. Me too. <laughs> I, I didn't I, I didn't watch iZombie uh right away. I just w- rewatched the flash on my DVR instantly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um so we open up with a familiar flashback at this point, but it has a really cool twist. Um we see the flash, the reverse sp- flash, speeding around some kind of portal. Meanwhile, we see Nora Allen putting Bear to bed and getting her her, her nightcap of uh, red wine. <laughs> and uh, something about that, just a redhead drinking 
red wine. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Joking there's something. I just can't quite get it out right now. And we see the all too familiar uh, liquid floating in the air as time slows down. And we see the chase between two speedsters reach the house, shattering the windows. And then the flash and reverse flash heads straight for Barry. Young Barry, that is. That was so visually stunning. And did we notice anything about the costume of the Flash from the future? Oh, of course we did. It was a white emblem, not the one we've seen on the show. It we we see familiar. future, like gotta be future back. berries. Yeah, gotta be future berries, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, interesting that we're playing with this so soon. <laughs> Uh huh. Um. So in the present, we see Barry showing him a brand new murder board. Only this isn't a murder board; it's a Doctor Wells board, <laughs> and it doesn't well, have much I guess, information. <laughs> I guess technically it is, but he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> well, he suspects it, but he can't prove it yet. Right, right. <laughs> so they get into this conversation, like, "What the hell does Wells want from me?" <laughs> and Joe's like, we can't, we can't get that right now. He's patient, and we need to be patient too. Basically, I read the six hundred book page book, and all I get is he's an enigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> it has a case of dyslexia struck you too? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it. Oh my god, it, this, that's really funny. Actually, that was a really funny line. And P- uh, this is the second time we've seen the book, so we're going to do that as a tie-in eventually. Yeah, I got to see that book. Just throwing that out there. Um, then what else happens? Um, but, like, just as they're talking, we kind of cut to this really great scene of these little red parachutes descending. And, you know, <laughs> the children and the parents are watching and, you know, they're carrying gift boxes. This was very visually similar to, uh, well, in the book anyway, uh, a Hunger Games, the final Hunger Games book. And they, they, they were full of bombs that detonated, too. And it was like, whoa, did the Flash just get dark? <laughs> like, <laughs> they were, like, rushing to save their children. And then, like, as Barry and Joe hear the explosions and see the smoke in the distance, you know, Barry does the, 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 the what are we going to call that? The zoom? The zip? <laughs> <laughs> He zips away in a in a in a in a flash of paper shuffling. <laughs> yes, that's so funny. I love when the papers go everywhere. <laughs> we see a father yelling for his son, who was, if I'm not mistaken, named Henry. Henry, yes, nice name. Love that name. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and of course, the Flash rescues the boy just as another bomb falls, and um, then we kind of cut to this weird, creepy guy in a mask who's taking credits for his bombs via vlogging. And I go, oh, that's so 2015, isn't it? <laughs> I bet you the trickster had that been around when he was, he'd do it too. I bet you so. So we're going to have to get you a mask? <laughs> I have one already, but, um. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, I don't use it for crime fighting at all. <laughs> Hopefully that went boosh over our young listeners' heads, and I'm moving on. <laughs> um. <laughs> So we see he's called himself the trickster and Barry and Joe, Wells, Caitlin and Cisco are all kind of watching this as Star Labs and Joe's like, oh, that reminds me of a guy. And I go, me too. Because then she, yeah. and he did the same crap 20 years ago. He was like, uh, he's in Iron Heights, of course. Everybody's in Iron Heights. And Barry's like being a real brat to Wells and it doesn't go unnoticed. And so they're like, Barry and Joe are like, yeah, we're going to go to Iron Heights to interview this dude. And Cisco starts the search to find who the new trickster is. And then Wells is like talking to Joe like, uh, what the fuck with Barry? And Joe just kind of gives him the, the brush off like, Barry's fine, just a little cranky. And then, I don't know if this was supposed to be like implied, but it felt like at that time, Wells, I use that in air quotes right now, remembers the night Nora died. Like, was that supposed to be a thing, or was that just where the flashback was? I don't know. I kind of wondered that, too. At any rate, I liked it. I found that these transitions were great. Not really jarring, like some shows. Arrow! <clears throat> so in the flashback, the reverse flash is seen carrying a young Barry from the house with the flash in hot pursuit, but they leave the young Barry behind, and then the speeds are separate, and we see that the reverse flash has lost his speed and falls. And he's like, Giddy, what the hell is going on? Gideon's like, um, your power's drained, dude. You're done. You can't go no So he gets mad and he removes his mask. And I go, okay, this is really Barry then, right? Because <laughs> Barry does that a lot. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's Ebor Thawne, but he doesn't look like Harrison Wells. Yet. Yet. 
So we had got to do a little face off. Actually, have you ever seen Fringe? No. It's very reminiscent of a device they use in the I think third or fourth season of Fringe, and I was just like Fringe feels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good show. You're gonna have to watch. Put that on the list. Put it in the queue. Okay. Anyway, at the prison, Barry and Joe are led to a cell that looks like Magneto cell from X Men, but I move on from that fact. <laughs> so apparently, don't don't forget the Twizzlers. I'm just saying that the cell was designed because he talked his therapist into committing suicide. Like what? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll go with it. I'll just smile and nod. Okay. It was like a very Hannibal Lecter kind of situation. Holy cow! Yeah. Ellie was, like, creeped out by it. <laughs> it was literally almost kind of a shot-for-shot shot recreation, honestly. Like, when he pops out of the shadows at Clarice in uh, Silence of the Lambs, I was like, I like it, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, Joe introduces himself, and Jesse's like, uh, I smell the candy in your pocket. Give it to me. <laughs> uh, so Barry, like, gives him the crime scene photos with the candy. And of course, he's not helpful. I smell candy in your pocket. <laughs> so creepy, bro. So creepy. <laughs> Although I always thought it was the other way around. Hey, little girl, do you want some candy? But <laughs> <laughs> so it's really funny because he's not helpful until he learns that there's a new trickster and his bombs are identical to his. <laughs> and Jesse's like, this copycat must have found my old Larry. You know what you should do if you find him? Keep the safeties off your gun. <laughs> it's like wow that's bleak um, yeah cutting to some iris and eddie time she shows up at the police <laughs> station because she's worried about mason bridge eddie thinks it's nothing but he goes you know as soon as this bomb case is done I'll, I'll, mason I'll... bridge is falling down falling down <laughs> long two bits <laughs> oh yeah exactly <laughs> Um, so then we see Joe and Barry find Jesse's old lair, and it's filled with all the cheesy camp of the 1990s show. Oh, Costumes, yeah. The wigs. I, tell me they kept that stuff, because I would be bummed if it was a replica. Yeah, I hope they did. The costume was Let's spot say on. Let's for the upgrade. Barry kind of vibrates the lock to get it to unlock, and then he starts to open the door, and there's an explosion, so he zips Joe to safety. It appears the young trickster has taken everything. But was there really anything to take? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. Um, Barry, Barry and Joe kind of return to Iron Heights. They stop at Harry's cell, of course, because that, that's the obligatory scene that we have to have. But not that I'm I love it. I live for it. <laughs> and uh, Barry's like, I'm so close to finding the man that killed mom. Now, this is the interesting thing. Henry's like, no, Barry. Don't, don't, you know, he's like, don't, don't worry. We've talked about this before. Yeah. So it's like, is there actually, I remember you proposed a theory that there was definitely something more to it and that maybe Henry didn't know. Well, my theory was that what if Henry and Nora were investigating something and that's what got her killed? It, it may be. so content to be behind bars it's it's a little jarring like yes he wants to be with his son but it's almost like he's protecting Barry. every episode it just gets kind of more and more that that route you know what i mean every time we see him yeah something is definitely going to happen there and did you notice the prison uniforms were different this week i didn't they weren't blue no henry asks joe but joe tells henry it's nothing and i'm like oh because it's not his secret to tell yet you know i respect that he's like look you know just hang in there henry hang in there I, I like that. I, I think that, and remember that intense scene where he's like, you know, he basically told Joe, oh, you know, I know you think I'm guilty of this and that. Like, that was a really powerful scene, and it's really great seeing the warming up and thawing of that relationship now that Joe actually does, like, believe. Yeah, now that he knows, he doesn't have to believe. Um, yes. So, back in Jesse's cell, Barry explains that everything was taken. Uh, Jesse puts on a good performance, and he goes, I had a bomb big enough to destroy Central City. <laughs> of Cisco calls and he's like, Yeah, here's a new blog from the trickster, no big deal. And Barry shows a video to Jesse, who calls the young man a fraud. And he's like, Take off your mask! Star craving freaking lunatic. It's kind of odd. He's always kind of John McClane's crazy, creepy character. He does it so well. Um, as Star laughs again, watches the trickster's, the trickster's blog again. Barry's rude to Wells again. I never have that deja vu feeling. <laughs> Meanwhile, Joe and Cisco try to get the investigation back on track, setting up for the when the 
season returns from a two week break. <laughs> <laughs> I've so far been unable to track the videos and Wells asked to talk to Barry alone. Uh, Wells says that he knows what Barry's thinking, but he's wrong, or so he probably wants Barry to believe. I don't know what this Right. Uh, Mr. Duplicitous is being duplicitous. Big shot, take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks Barry's upset about Henry. Barry plays along, and Wells is like, yeah, I'm gonna help, dude. It's gonna be alright. And then Barry's, he's like, Barry, you gotta focus on this new trip, too. And then Iris kind of contacts the Flash about wanting a meeting. But before Barry can go, Wells tells him, I'm always here for you. <sighs> and I want to believe it, but now that I know what I know, I can't. Well, and the last line of the episode, really, from Dr. Wells makes you realize that for sure. Yeah, unfortunately. Then we head back to the past as a younger Harrison Wells who can walk and talk and stand and has a pretty lady on an empty beach named Tess Morgan. <gasps> And they're both nerds. They're both hot science nerds. That's what I love most about the DC universe. All the science nerds are hot. Yes. <laughs> anyway, they chat about science, and Wells tells Tess of his plans for a lab, which he wants to name after her. Aww. Aww. It's like the biggest nerd compliment next to naming a star after you, I guess. Um. She just, so she names a star after him. I know. That was so cute. She should just star labs instead because he's the only star she sees. Meanwhile, creepy old Ebor spies on him from a distance. <laughs> Is he related to Ray Palmer too? Like, yeah, more like Cupid, I think. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Um, <laughs> Iris waits at Jitters, which is otherwise deserted. She's just about to give up, and then the Flash shows up. Iris is like, uh, yeah, can you find me some bread? She's like, yeah, I'll look into it. And then, like, it's almost like he wanted to tell her. You know, they hope to see her after she rejected him when he knows that there's something there. Well, in the whole, wait a minute, why are we meeting here? I still had a, a key. This is kind of our place. That was like, ouch. Yeah, she still had. You know what, though? Like, they totally dropped that plot point for now about her having the picture of the Flash that obviously looks like Barry. Like, Okay, so then, like, Cisco tells him there's a new broadcast, and he's like, hey, can I borrow your laptop? <laughs> like, you can have anything you want, dude. <laughs> he sees the new trickster making a bomb threat, and he, and he goes to, like, search for the bomb. And, you know, so do the police. And uh, it's really weird, because it's like, he's speeding through there, and then Wells is like, dude, the threat must be a trick. But Barry's like, nah, son, I don't believe you. So he keeps understanding, and even Cisco goes, "What the hell? What the deuce?" Well, yeah, because because he's because Cisco's using the satellites to try to check the for a heat signature because it should show up on a you know satellite imagery. Yeah, and he can't see anything. So the Flash finds the crate, and then he opens it. It's no bomb. It's a it was a trick, and the new trickster is at the Iron Heights. He's down in the basement, and break it out, trickster one point oh. And okay. Oh. Did that? Did that not remind you the way he blew that of of Bane blowing Bruce Wayne's toy garage up and the Batmobile falling down? <laughs> Sorry, that's exactly what it reminded me of, though. Oh, yeah, I I expect that from Arrow. I don't expect it from the Flash, so I just kind of glossed over that because this is a fan yeah. episode. And I want to get upset. <laughs> I hear you. Something about something about the way this stuff fell. I think is what triggered that memory in me. Probably. And you, you bring up the worst movie in the trilogy to boot. I know, sorry. <laughs> Just because you had to watch Batman Returns today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Don't you come bring up my sore spot. <laughs> I was tortured. <laughs> anyway, Flash calls Joe and he's like, the bomb was a trick. And Joe's like, yeah, both the tricksters were working together. And they've escaped jail and they got your dad. So, cut to the hideout and the new tricksters got Harry tied to a chair. And I'm like, gloss over this because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> family appropriate podcast 50 shades of green was last week or two weeks ago 50 shades of red this week <laughs> yeah there you go and he's like you have to admit that was one hell of a trick and i was just like yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. it sure mm. was anyway they, they explain why they take henry because you know the father of a cop would make a good hostage um and henry's like the flash is gonna come get y'all <laughs> <laughs> Wonder how he knows that. Hmm. I know. <laughs> Jesse calls the new trickster Axel and says that he knew uh his strength. It was in his blood because guess what? It was almost like we were on the office. He goes, I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
saw that coming. Channeling his inner Vader. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, as Star Labs, Joe identifies Axel and Barry feels guilty about his father's kidnapping. He knows he should have listened to Wells now. And we get another flashback, the saddest flashback we've had since Mama Allen died in the season opener. Um, honestly, Wells is driving home a tired test and they're flirting. And maybe they shouldn't have been flirting because maybe he would have seen the line of nails stretched across the road. Just, just saying. <laughs> yeah. They blow the tires, the car flips over, and I'm like, mm, I don't think that's how that works, but it makes no. sense to me. <laughs> Wells survives and he sees Tess is badly hurt and he starts to call for help. He sees the feet outside the car and begs help for the help to come help Tess. But Ebor's like, this woman's been dead for centuries! And I'm like, is that his tagline? Is that his catchphrase? <laughs> anyway, Barry sits through the pipeline. Joe finds him. He's like, dude, Henry's still alive. Uh, but Barry's like, I can't lose my dad. And I don't trust the man. I can't leave my dad staying in the man who probably murdered my mom. And Joe's like, your real power is being able to see the best in people. So, you know, let's just assume that Wells, for right now, has your best interest at heart. And I was just like, oh. Yeah. And that's so true. Yep. That is Barry's superpower. Andrew Casco gets it almost as much as Jeff Johnson. He really does. Mm-hmm. You know, I like when they add those little touches. Because Barry's the best. At least new pre-New 52 anyway. But we won't. <laughs> anyway, we cut to a smoky hot Candace pad in a really awesome red dress. Yes. Yowza. And uh, she served a glass of champagne by Jesse, who's a waiter. We also see Axel's there. <laughs> that turns out to be uh, something to re-elect the bellows. When Jesse starts to make a speech, and Bellows is like, uh, excuse you? Who the hell are you? Get the hell out <laughs> I love that his joke bombs. <laughs> oh, oh. Hashtag funky <laughs> business. Take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, Jesse reveals who he is, and he's like, guess what? This is a robbery. Axel pulls out a machine gun. I just feel like it should have said, thwop, and bang, and pow. <laughs> okay, I didn't hear a single comment about his wig. I can't believe it. I know. It's still better than the eyelid slash honk struggle wigs. <laughs> the flash does I everything just, better. I'm sorry. I just about died laughing now with that wig. <laughs> um, so they poison champagne. Jesse, of course, sends the antidote, but uh needs to be administered in an hour. And then the dude that show this is why you never show up early to a party, dude. Always be fast. <laughs> the guy had the first drink and he's convulsing. And he's like, okay, time to give me all your money. And I'm like, poor Iris. She has no money. Foaming at the mouth. That was great. Oh, Candace said that that really, like, kind of grossed her out when they were shooting that scene, by the way. I don't know if you saw that tweet. No, but I'm sure it would. Um, so, Jesse's like, yeah, anybody who calls 911 is gonna get it. But Iris, being the smart girl she is, dials her dad and he listens. And Cisco to the rescue, pings Iris' phone, and then Wells and Caitlin go to make an animal. Jesse sees Iris, and of course she's attracted to her. I mean, you can't miss her in that dress at all. Oh my god. And so I go, thank God. The Flash sees in and shoves Jesse against the wall. And while, of course, Flash is focused on Jesse, Axel attaches a device to the Flash's wrist. Guess what? It's a bomb. Are you familiar with the movie Speed? <laughs> well, it's not. Here's ba- they basically summed it up for you. If it slows down to under 600 miles an hour, it will explode. And Jesse's like, you better run! <laughs> So we get that great shot of uh, Barry speeding through the city. The flash calls Cisco. Cisco's like, yeah, that's a real bomb. And then he's like, I can't run forever. So Wells is like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give everybody the fangirl squee of a night, and we're going to have you phase. Mm-hmm. So he goes, if you vibrate at the correct frequency, you can pass through a wall, leaving the bomb behind. You know, Wells calms uh, Barry, and he's talking to him about how running that fast feels about feeling the lightning's power. And I just want to shout out uh, Tommy C. That was so freaking sexy. I was like, can you just whisper that? Can you just leave a voicemail of that on my phone? (laughs) Yes, exactly. Because that was beautiful. It was. And then um, Wells calls it the Speed Force. And we finally have the name for it. And uh, Barry sees a large truck ahead and runs through it, leaving the bomb on the other side. Anyway, Jesse watches on the device as a ransom grows larger. And then the flash speeds through the room, dousing everyone with the antidote. And he's like, where? I got a problem with that. It wasn't very sanitary? Yeah, he used the same needle. I know, I had a problem with that too, and I totally agree. That was a great one. But in a pinch, you know, I'd rather, you know, have whatever, cooties or AIDS or whatever, where you at least get pills instead of dying imminently on the floor. 
<laughs> That's true. So, you know, that is very true. Um, so, uh, they kind of actually tell him where he is, right? Yep. Because he finds him tied to a chair. But, oh, because it was booby trap. Duh. Right. But, like, that wasn't a very effective booby trap if you know the guy can run over 600 miles an hour. Yeah, well, he doesn't know who's going to find him, though. Oh, uh, true. It, it was a ridiculous booby trap, though. It made me- yeah, it was It was the Swedish chef booby trap. <laughs> it was. Oh, um, so, anyway, after they're outside, Henry is just laughing. Like, he just, because he knows it's Barry. And so Barry's just nice. Absolutely. He unmasks and they hug. And he goes, you look good in red. You always do. <laughs> That's right. Because, yeah, we see him in the red hoodie all the time in the flashbacks. Yep. Um, Henry looks, uh, and they take him to uh, Star Labs for a little bit. And, you know, Cisco is so sweet. He's like, uh, I'll teach you all about this tech when you get out. Caitlin hugs him. And then... If you get out. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah, if you get out. I'll, I'll, I'll bring you up to speed if you get out. I thought, I, I thought I heard <laughs> when, for some reason. That's, that must be optimistic. <laughs> Oh, and then he's kind of like realized he put his he realizes he put his foot in his mouth and oh yeah and then, I'll shut up now <laughs> no no I, I'm glad you corrected me because literally that was an optimistic thing <laughs> <laughs> um, no that's what he says basically you know it's, it, it, well he doesn't say that but it's kind of what he means yeah. oops <laughs> uh, then this really sweet scene where Harry joins Barry in the flash suit and he's like, how does the scene feel? And Barry's like, there's no feeling like it. And I, I love the look he gives Wells. And then oh, yeah. unthinkable happens. Henry thinks Wells. Yeah. And and then what does Wells say to him? Oh, he says that uh, Barry's extraordinary. And I will do anything to ensure Barry's future. That was the creepiest line of the night to me. Oh, that did give me chills now that you mentioned. But I don't think he was talking about it. <laughs> No, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, totally, totally, uh, very dubious. Yes. Um. So Henry's like, all right, I guess it's time to go. He holds out his wrist to Joe, and Joe doesn't cuff him. And I was like, that was a really great small moment. Yes, that was fantastic. And then Barry uh, gets a hug from Caitlin. Oh. Gets it. oh, don't forget, Caitlin hugs hugs Henry too. Oh yeah, I already before. About that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was good though. Cause yeah, cause everybody needs hugs. <laughs> Hugs all around. Wells compliments Barry, who answers that he's lucky to have Wells. When Barry's back is turned, his smile fades, and so does Wells. And I don't know if anybody watches Revenge, but that is what I call the revenge witch face of doom. (laughs) (laughs) Every time somebody's up to things, that's the look they get. I was like, I love it. I love it. It was so, so (laughs) good. Anyway, we get another flashback, and we see Wells has managed to crawl out of the car. Ebor thought, oh, Ebor throws him. Who are you? And he goes, my name is Ebor Thawne. And I'm like, in an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that would have been so awesome to have. Like, we just need a different kind of credit for an episode where it's just, like, from the perspective of somebody else. I just want that to happen. Yes. Ebor's like, yeah, well, see, you invented a particle accelerator in 2020, along with this lady that's dying next to you. But I'm going to need that to happen a little bit sooner. So he basically sucks uh, Wells' essence out and sucks his face into his body. And, well, I guess Wells is gone. <laughs> yeah. You know, it reminded me again of the Princess Bride. See this machine? <laughs> it's going to suck one life, one one year from your life. Dude, this show always reminds you of the Princess Bride for some reason. I think that's your thing now. Eddie looks for Joe uh, at the police station. Joe asks Eddie to sit. He wants Eddie to stop looking for Brit- Mason Bridge. The Flash speeds in, and in the worst decision in the history of decisions on the Flash, reveals his identity to Eddie. And they're like, look, dude, we gotta keep Iris out of this. And Iris becomes Quentin Lance of the Arrow universe in the Flash. <laughs> yes. And I'm ticked out to no end again. Yes. But we'll get there. In Joe's house, yeah. Eddie tells Iris that, uh, Hey, why were they at Joe's house? But anyway. Eddie says, they were having dinner. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Eddie says, I was mm-hmm. Bridge moved to Brazil. There was a girl involved. And I'm like, is he quoting that senator's story? Like the Appalachian Trail story? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I, just, I don't know. For some reason, I just thought of that. Um, Iris accepts Eddie's story and returns cooking dinner for all of them. And that ticks me off, too. But whatever. Joe asks if Iris bought the story. Eddie's like, I think so. But I don't want to keep the truth from her. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Redeeming quality in Eddie. Uh, yes. 
But he puts it aside and, you know, he, he asks what Wells is up to. And Barry realizes that when Wells was describing how Speedy felt, uh, using the Speed Force felt, it came from first-hand knowledge. And he's like, Wells is the man in the yellow suit. <laughs> I ain't the yellow suit. No man. He's like, I don't know how, but he is. <laughs> but he isn't. But he is. Oh, God. Oh, in the past, the police arrive at the crash site. The body of the man who had been here so Wells is nowhere to be found. And Ebor Thawne, who looks just like Wells, emerges from the car and, and introduces himself. And then, my name is Harrison Wells. I think we might have to, every time somebody says my name is, take a shot. I think that's the new thing. <laughs> that's at the beginning of every episode. Well, that's how you start off an episode. Then take a shot. <laughs> Take a shot of hey, at least we don't... Code Red. There you go. That's who should be sponsoring this whole thing. Yeah, there you go. We don't have Starcrossed anymore, so now we've only got two shows that do that, but still. Well, I'm sure the spinoff will start. Our names are. <laughs> yes. And we, we are. All the Justice. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 I da, would lose da, da. it. I would lose it if they actually did something like that. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the grade. Oh, there's no way this isn't an A. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good. I was going to have to come smack you through this Skype chat. <laughs> this is, I told Ellie, I said, this is probably my favorite since the pilot. Mm, I think this is, is it, it goes the pilot, uh, episode 13, I think it is, or 14. Yeah, 14. And then, no, it goes the pilot, this one, and then episode 14 so far. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah this was wow. Yeah, episode 20 years in the making, and nobody knew that it was actually 20, up, 20 years in the making. It it was great. It, it A few things do bother me, but I let it go because the acting was over the top, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Uh, the depth, yeah. uh, the guy that played Axel was like, he blew me away. Like, I was not expecting that. And, and the way the two of them played off of each other, and the facial expressions were so dead on between the two of them. Yeah. It was just really uncanny. And what even took this over the top even more is that Mark Hamill actually live tweeted the episode. He live tweeted with uh, Devon Gray. They had some great, great back and forth as well. We got a lot of behind the scenes stuff from this episode. It was just a very kind of all inclusive episode. Something and, and a featurette. Yeah, that was a good one. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, of course, I give this an A plus. I was literally um, just giddy. Not just me. Jumping up and down. It, it, it actually lived up to the hype, which is very rare that TV does. Live up to the hype. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every aspect of this episode. The cinematography, the scoring, the guest stars, like, they really stepped it up. And I was really, really shocked that only one person wrote this episode. Again, it was Andrew Kessler. Uh, we had a brand new wow. character. Didn't even know until I looked. I was expecting this to be, like, a John Barry episode or something like that. Just right. By, uh, a guy by the name of Val. Hmm. And I like I've never seen anything from this guy, but he's more than welcome back. Like he just fit in like a pro. Um, I really enjoyed the shot of the little parachute a lot. And and the effort of this episode made a huge difference in the ratings. Well, yeah, but they also hyped this up so much that it was hard for anybody to miss. They were adjusted up after the ratings came in and were crazy. So let's see, best scene. Ah, so many. Um, love the prison scenes with Mark Hamill, of course. Of course, because they were so wonderfully creepy. I mean, literally, I had goosebumps. Loved seeing Papa Allen without cuffs. That was so heartwarming to see him out of jail. Maybe they're wetting our appetite. Maybe they are. Free Henry Allen. Um, <laughs> I we, we forgot to add permanently. They did it. Then they took away from us. <laughs> That's right, right. That's exactly right. Um, uh, I loved seeing all the, the stuff from the 90s show. That was just so nostalgic. It was my little fangirl heart was going to help you know. And <laughs> um, also the it with Iris in Jitters, that was really that that exchange was really poignant, you know. I, I can't wear a mask with you, you know, or or I guess I can't wear a mask with you. However, he says that, but it's so true, you know. She sees him for who he is, even though she doesn't really see him for who he is. I enjoyed uh, the Flash saving him 
Uh, I really enjoy yes. uh, quote unquote Dr. Wells uh, describing the seahorse and how to think. Oh, uh, yeah. Really great. And I enjoyed learning. I actually enjoyed the flashbacks. Like, I had to realize, I had, we actually had a question on Tumblr like, how do you feel about the, the uh, odd lack of flashbacks that we've had? And do you think that there's a reason behind it? That, well, and I, I, you know, I responded that, you know, I think that it's because we have a really huge emotional flashback uh, century, a couple of episodes coming up. And unlike Arrow, they don't feel like you can shove it into every single episode. Mm-hmm. So it turns out I was right. And I think we have another one coming up with uh, who is Dr. Who is Harrison Wells. That looks to be really uh, flashback oriented as well. So. And this next one, we're going to get Tina back. All Star Tina? Yeah. Really? She's in it, yes, awesome. and a really awkward dinner, Ooh. which should be very awkward fun. Dinners are, never turn out well, especially on this day. At a restaurant, no less. It looks like. I'm here for it. Uh, favorite line? So many. That's so tough. I'll get you started. Though. Okay, you um, go. Besides this, besides, besides the whole speed force yeah, explanation feeling thing. Like that uh, wow. Henry, you always did look good in red. Yes. Um, look. Whatever else he is, he is Harrison Wells. You love science, he is science. It's like you made best friends with Einstein. And, of course, finally, from the trickster, 1.0. No, no, no! Take off my mask, you fraud! Pretender! Sham! I lost <laughs> That was fantastic. Oh. oh, goodness. Um, Most iconic moment in this episode for you? The hug between Barry and his dad. When he finally drops the hood and the smile on their face. I like that one. I like uh, Henry Allen and the Tricksters in my hideout. I like that a lot. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, and John Wesley shut back together again. <laughs> Son, you need a better role model. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got any conspiracy theories you want to share? Mm, well. That, mm. that one minute trailer? Wow. Holy cow, yeah. If you guys have not seen that trailer, you need to go to the CW or YouTube and look at it. I mean, wow. I need to slow it down is what I need to do. So let's do Easter eggs. What did you notice? You should notice a lot. In this oh, my goodness. Oh, so much from the 90s flash. Um, of course, in the in the warehouse, the costume, the mask, the, all the set stuff from the... Yeah, all the set stuff from the 90s flash. Um, let's see. There were 52s. Tons of them, but the most notable. Yes. Right, right. We had the the actor that played the mayor from the 90s flash. <laughs> so that's, I, bless you. I would take that as an Easter egg, too. Um, bless you. <laughs> and in a flash, in less than an hour, we did get confirmation that, yes, that is the coat. Yeah, yeah. That church coat that he wears when he gets out of jail is, is the actual coat from the 1990s flash. He kept it in his closet. Yep. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> oh, and a fun fact that we shared at the beginning, but it wasn't necessarily on this podcast network, is that uh, at the end of the episode of The Trial of the Trickster, John gave uh, Mark Hamill his ears. Yes. And he supposedly still probably has so yeah, John Hamill has the original Flash costume ears, and he didn't lose any during the production of the show, which I find just crazy. Yeah, but, I mean, they just don't make stuff like these anymore, Kelly. That's true. That's very true. Very awesome. Uh, so yeah, I, I have a ton more Easter eggs, of course. Uh, the first is of course the you- official name drop, and we saw the first time for this particular Barry Allen to do the phase trick. Um, yes. you can look forward to probably seeing him get superhuman endurance, increased perception. We already see accelerated healing. I don't know if we're going to do decelerated aging. Uh, I want to see, we should. Uh, I want to see Speed Force Aura, <laughs> supercharged brain activity. We kind of have gotten glimpses of that, but I want the retention factor of it as well. Um, vortex creation. Oh, Steel yeah. Speed, like, I don't know how I feel about Steel Speed. And I don't know how useful Vortex creation is going to gonna come in handy because I, I mean, literally season one has been all over the place. And I mean that in a good way. It keeps me very off balance. I don't know what to expect, what storyline we're going to pull from next. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there's tons of stuff that goes along with it. And only a few speedsters have actually merged with it. And that's Barry, Johnny Quick, and Max Mercury. So, I mean, I really want to see some other speedsters eventually. 
Um, and that's mm-hmm. just Wally West. I, I love to see like an old timey throwback. You remember in Smallville when they were doing um Absolute Justice, how they kind of did the throwback to the Justice Society. I'd love to see something yes. like that where there were a speedsters in like the past. That would be cool. Maybe even save it for the spinoff. Who knows? That would be I fun. Think that should be the first episode, honestly. That's just me. If I was running things, that's how <laughs> I do it. But you know, what is what is this little stupid thing <laughs> girl know? Um, let's see, let's see, we got a name drop, of course. Yep. Um, we got our season five Breaking Bad. We got Out of Fire, <laughs> Star Wars reference. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, that that's about it. Really? Oh, oh. And Jesse L. Martin got his lightsaber signed by Mark Hamill while he was there. Lucky dog. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm waiting to see it show up on the set on his desk or something. You better not. I'll make my way to Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be fun to see it on Joe's desk, it though? Would be. To see that Joe is a nerd, too. And Barry rubbed off on him. Or maybe that's Barry yes. got it from. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that's just about it, other than shameless plug self-promotion, Kelly. So I'm going to tell them where they can find us. We are on Twitter at Flashpoint underscore SMG. Um, you can find us at Flashpoint.SMG at gmail.com. You can find us on Tumblr for now at theflashpodcast.tumblr.com. And please don't forget to come rate, review, and subscribe to us over on iTunes. Make sure you download. It doesn't count. So where can they find you, Kelly? Oh, goodness. You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, just about everywhere else at Supersquint. That's S-U-P-E-R-S-Q-U-I-N-T. You can also read my articles over at voiceoftv.com. And you can listen to me on Before the Bat with Phil and Tyler, as well as Queen Consolidated with the lovely Miss Lilith. Find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire. You can find me on Tumblr and littlefairyhellfire.tumblr.com I want to encourage you guys to check out my blog if you have not done so because I'm participating in April A to Z that means every day Monday through Saturday I am posting about one of my favorite movies from my childhood I did Dick Chasey this Saturday so it's littlefairyhellfire.tumblr.com come read comments, enjoy Uh, I did it because a lot of people are asking for movie reviews so here's a taste of things to come I guess um, and I want to encourage you guys to also stop by our, uh, our what do I want to call it, our uh, podcast uh, provider page on iTunes as well. And you can check out our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. It has a list of all our podcasts. We have tons of blogs about different things. Check it out. It's something for everybody. So, yeah, that's enough shameless plugs and self-promotion. So, you know, we're about to do it. Uh, it'll be next Tuesday before you know it, but not really, because we're taking a two-week break. Flash will be back April 14, 2015 at 8 p.m. Be there or be square. But until then, we will be back in Flash. Flash.